For years, countless theories have been put forward for why past civilizations collapsed. A common theme that's seen around the world is that over 10,000 years ago, civilizations seemed to have hit their peak. Gobleki Tepe, which is estimated to be around 12,000 years old, the ancient Egyptians, known for being masterful craftsmen, and Teotihuacan, which researchers have now said was abandoned due to an ice age. One idea for why this civilization seemingly fell and were abandoned by people nearby was due to a large cataclysmic event. This event was given the name of the Younger Dryas, although it's important to note that many researchers didn't accept this idea, noting that we don't have enough evidence to prove that this happened. However, a new scientific paper that was published on the 5th of January 2022 revealed that this event did happen. The paper was submitted to the Scientific Progress Journal, and the abstract reads as follows. The progress of science has sometimes been unjustifiably delayed by the premature rejection of a hypothesis, for which substantial evidence existed, and which later achieved consensus. Continental drift, meteorite impact cratering, and anthropogenic global warming are examples from the first half of the 20th century. This article presents evidence that the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis is a 21st century case. The hypothesis proposes that the airburst or impact of a comet 12,850 years ago caused the ensuing 1,200 year long Younger Dryas core period and contributed to the extinction of the Pleistocene megafauna in the Western Hemisphere and the disappearance of the Clovis Paleo-Indian culture Soon after publication, a few scientists reported that they weren't able to replicate the critical evidence, and the scientific community at large came to reject the hypothesis. By today, however, many independent studies have reproduced that evidence at dozens of younger dry signs. This article examines why scientists so readily accepted the early false claims of irreproducibility and what lessons the premature rejection of the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis holds for science. End quote. This is big news, as many researchers have theorised that during the Younger Dryas it wasn't just dozens of animals that went extinct, but also various different cultures, with them saying that the event created a sort of global reset. This means that potentially dozens of advanced civilizations perished within a short amount of time and our books are missing out on a huge chunk of history. Many praised the paper but were critical of modern scientists, saying that this type of behaviour is seen far too often, where scientists will fail to look into something even though there's more than enough evidence. One scientist called Mr Baker commented on this via social media. He said the following, I'm a retired professor and I took part in some of these studies that looked into this event. And to me, the reason I came up with for why this didn't move forward as quickly as it should have came down to status and reputation. It seemed that many people didn't want to make that initial leap, and put their name to something without being 100% sure. I can understand why they did this, but then the question remains that if every scientist does this, it means that we're never going to move forward. And in turn, science suffers as a whole because people are worried about attaching themselves to something in fear of being wrong. End quote. This study doesn't just end with acceptance, though. Back in 2010, other studies were submitted, and at the time they were cast aside by scientists, but they went into detail about how the Younger Dryas event actually caused large floods around our planet. And now that this study has substantial evidence to back up that this happened, it's likely that people will now be looking into other theories that directly happened due to the Younger Dryas event. One study said the following. The erosion surface and gravel suggest that at least two glacial outburst floods swept into the Arctic Ocean. End quote. Recent discoveries by underwater archaeologists suggest that this event ended up sinking many cities. One such finding was made off the coast of Turkey where researchers found traces of ancient civilizations dating back since the time of Noah. One thing that's interesting is that many civilizations talk about a great flood, 
and some of these are even documented. Some scientists don't actually doubt that this happened, but have suggested that it may not have been as massive as it's made out. For example, one theory is that the Great Flood could have been the flooding of the Black Sea. Researchers have said that rising water levels happened in this region around 7,000 years ago. Again, scientists know that there was an event that sank cities. After all, several underwater ancient cities have been discovered in recent years. It's the magnitude of the event that people can't seem to agree on. Woods Hole Oceanic Institution said the following about this alleged flood. Now, a new study in the January 2009 issue of Science Review suggests that if the flood actually occurred, it was much smaller, hardly of biblical proportions. Liviu Giosen of Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution and Florin Philip and Stefan Continescu found evidence that Black Sea and seawater levels rose only 5 to 10 metres, and this was around 9,400 years ago not 50 to 60 metres as previously proposed. The flood would have drowned only around 2,000 square kilometres of land, rather than 70,000 square kilometres. End quote. Robert Ballard, one of the world's best-known underwater archaeologists, detailed his findings that were made in Turkey. His dive teams had been investigating areas around Turkey that date back to the time of Noah, Ballard has a great track record for making discoveries that others couldn't. In fact, going back to 1985, he and his team sent down some robotic rovers that were equipped with some of the best cameras around, and they were able to locate one of the most famous ships of all time, the Titanic. Since then, he's used these advanced underwater robots to answer some of the world's biggest questions, one of which is, did the Great Flood ever happen? He said the following, Where I live in Connecticut, there is ice a mile above my house, all the way back to the North Pole, around 15 million kilometers. That's a big ice cube. But then it started to melt. We're talking about the floods of our living history. The question is, was there a mother of all floods? We went in there to look for the flood, not just a slow-moving, advancing rise of sea level, but a really big flood that then stayed. The land that went under stayed under. End quote. Ballard said that he thinks that his team were able to pinpoint a timeline for when this event happened, saying that it likely occurred around 5000 BC, and even some experts backed up these estimates, saying that this is likely when Noah's flood would have occurred. So what do you make of this new paper detailing that the Younger Dryas did happen? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.